Hi, I'm Andrew with Baker's Gas. We're here today with a comparison video on the Millermatic and the Multimatic 255s by Miller. So, what I'm going to talk about in this video is the differences between these two because they look identical, um, the confusion that sometimes is created by these two machines, and then we're going to go over the features of these units, uh, what they do, and which one I would pick over the other one or, or vice versa. Right? So, we're going to see where this goes. But, so, jump right in. We got a 255 Multimatic and the 255 Miller Matic. So the Miller Matic is only a MIG machine only. So it will only MIG run. Uh, we can pulse weld with it, and we can push pull aluminum with it as well, the Miller Matic. The Multi Matic does TIG and stick. DC TIG only, but we can also stick weld with it too. So just to compare the two, right, if, if you're gonna ever TIG or stick weld, you want the Multi Matic. If you're never gonna do either of those, the Miller Matic is for you. The Miller Matic, is a great machine. Same duty cycle as the Multimatic, so we're at 60% at 230 amps on MIG. Um, great machine. We've been seeing a lot of them going to some uh, fabrication shops for replacement MIG welders. Uh, we've had a lot of good success with them, uh, and, they're, and they seem to be running pretty good out there in the, in the field. So the Miller Matic is good for MIG only, and, and I just want to stress that because a lot of people, they, they see the different price tag on the Miller Matic, and they think they're buying a Multimatic, and they do not buy a Multimatic, they buy the Millermatic because they look identical. You can see same box, same color, same everything. I mean, the only thing that you see different is the sticker. And this one says Millermatic, this one says Multimatic. So to jump right in, um, the Millermatic does 208 to 230 volt. So, and it comes with a plug molded on the unit. So we got a molded plug on that. So 208, 230, um, the Multimatic does not come with a plug. And the reason for that is because this goes 208 to 575 volts. So we got a wide range of voltage, just same old auto link to. Um, and that's why it does not come with a plug because we don't know what type of plug you're running, whether it's an industrial setting or you're going to put 460 volt to this thing single phase and run it like that. Uh, but as you can see on the front of the Multimatic here, we have MIG, stick, TIG, auto set, and pulse. Um, and we'll link our other video down there that goes over a lot of this, but we're going to shut pulse off. I'll just show you here in the MIG. We got auto set on. You can shut auto set off and go straight back to manual MIG so you control your voltage and your inches per minute or wire feed speed. Um, I recommend using auto set. It is easier to use. You tell what's, what gas you're using, what wire size, and the material thickness, and it gives you a recommended parameters. Now you can go outside those parameters. But those are just recommended for that material thickness. Um, pretty easy to use, pretty easy to set up. Now, th what this one differs though, the Multimatic, we can stick weld with it. It's going to tell us that we're, we got some cable issues because we don't have our stinger plugged in. That's okay. Turn it in here. So, now with this Multimatic, we can run 6010, 6011, 6013, and 7018. So, biggest question a lot of people get will this run 60? Yes, it'll run 6010. It'll run 7018, and it'll run up to 532nd electrode. Now, you can give it, a, we're in auto set, so we give it material thickness, the electrode size, 7018. Um, pretty awesome. Auto set's sweet, but like I said, you can shut that off, go right into manual mode, and uh, just run it from there. So, then this thing will also TIG weld, DC TIG weld, so steel and stainless steel only. Um, now, we're not in auto set, but we can, it, it's a lift arc only, but when you buy the, the Multimatic, you can get an option of a TIG kit, and then you put a foot pedal on it, but it's still lift arc, but the foot pedal controls your amperage. Go to auto set, tell what material gauge, diameter of our tungsten, and whether our remote pedal is on or off, and then it gives us our recommended setting. Pretty awesome, so we'll go back to MIG. I'll plug that. Plug that back in, and then we'll go pulse. So, where pulse, where, what I would recommend if you're if you're new to the pulse world and you buy a 255 and you know it'll do pulse, you hear a lot of good things about it. I would recommend running auto set to start because you can go in the manual mode with pulse, but there's a couple of different things that run. So you still control wire feed speed, but now you control arc length, and that confuses a lot of people because arc length is a direct correlation with voltage, right? So now, but we're using different terminology, so. When I say use auto set because it's going to give you a, a recommended setting, so you tell material thickness, wire, and gas. 
and then it's going to give you a recommended setting. My pulse is good on thin material, uh, less spatter on pulse, uh, sometimes quicker welds, sometimes better looking welds. Um, it all depends on your settings, but usually generally for thinner material, but what we're blending with pulse, we're going to change gas so we need 80% or more argon in our mix, uh, but because we're blending between short circuit transfer and spray transfer. We're using the best of those both worlds and we're pulsing those and we're creating a, a better well, less better, uh, thinner or lower heat input to our material and then just less better all the way around. So pulse is a pretty unique thing. The Miller Matic will also do pulse, but this unit, like I said, the only, biggest difference is stick and tape welding, DC only. So this unit is a multi-matic machine, so don't get confused when you buy a, a Miller Matic and it won't take well because you bought the Miller Matic. The multi-matic is the unit that does all of them. So let's jump into the Miller Matic and see what this thing can do. So we got the Miller Matic 255 plugged in, remember MIG only machine. Um, so just like the, the multi-matic, the Miller Matic has a two drive roll system. Uh, your tensioner here, it's your standard Miller drive roll system. Pretty nice, robust, heavy duty. I mean, really a nice aluminum power block. We got our cable, or our, I'm sorry, our trigger connection, and then our push-pull gun or our spool gun connection right here. Um, just like the 250, Multimac 255, we can fit a 33 or 45 pound spool of wire, um, and then we can, we can also fit an 11 pound spool of wire, so a smaller spool of wire. Comes with a set of drive rolls, 035, 045. Standard there, you got your regular chart here, so if you don't want to use auto set, you can refer to the chart, give you some basic settings in there, and you can run that. Um, so the Miller Mac 255 is a MIG only machine. It's a, it is a nice machine. So one of the things that I want to touch on with the 255, the Miller Mac 255, is that one day, if you if you are running a Miller Mac 252 now, that is a transformer machine, that will one day be gone. And this is the replacement for the 252. So Everyone's trying to say, well, I don't want to go inverter. I want to go transformer, so I'm going to pick a 252. That's, that's great. 252 is a great machine. Try and true, they're bulletproof, but they're going to go away one day. And I, I guarantee it one day they'll be gone, and the Miller Matic 255 will be its replacement. So just keep that in mind down the road. Um, if you're hesitant now, uh, it, it's probably a good thing to start transitioning to the Miller Matic 255 uh, because the 252 will be gone. But I'm not downplaying that 252, it's an awesome machine. So let me walk around this front here and I'll show you some of the setup on the front of this machine. Um, put our power cable in, we got a ground stud here. Uh, so we have auto set and pulse. So you can see comparatively to the two fit Multimatic 255, a lot less buttons up top because we're only MIG welding only. And uh, we can go into auto set. It's going to do the same thing as the Multimatic 255. We just Tell it what gas, wire size, material thickness, gives us some recommended parameters in there. Um, it's just a good all around thing. Then we can go into pulse. Now it's telling us we need 9010 gas because we got to change the gas, right? Because pulse uses 80% or more argon. Same thing, arc length, inches per minute, or wire feed speed, we got to adjust. But it gives us our target setting on both. Um, Obviously, we've got USB for updates, our power switch here. So it's a lot It's a lot simpler than the Multimatic because there's a lot less functionality on the Miller Matic 255. Um, and I'm not saying this is a bad machine at all. It is a good machine. So if you're just going to MIG weld only, we still got some good output on this. 60% uh, duty cycle, 230 amps. It's still a darn good machine for that. Um, and it comes with a molded plug, so you don't have to put your own plug on there. Uh, it is a two, 208 to 230 volt machine only though, no 110, um, so you do have to have a 220 amp, uh, or two, I'm sorry, 220 volt plug at home. Uh, but we're seeing a lot of popularity with these because the 252 was in light industrial fabrication and now people are kind of swaying towards these and they're becoming popular uh, because they have pulse and they have auto set. Uh, before the 252 doesn't have pulse, this has pulse. The, the next closest machine prior to these were the 350P, which was a that was the only pulse machine they made in that that low range of uh, so industrial equipment. So the 255 has pulse, uh, pretty awesome. But you can still get a push pull gun for this and a spool gun for this. So if you're going to run aluminum or anything like that, this will still do it. Um, if you got any questions or anything, comments, leave them down below. We'll do our best to answer them. 
And uh, thanks again for watching and stay tuned for some more.